um, when I'm working with colour, obviously the mood of the piece affects the overall palette. Go back to the moving painting, you can, and this is where the young designers often make a mistake, they think about costumes in isolation, or they think about the set, forgetting that there are people on the set. The scale of the colour, as well as the shape and form, must relate to that person, to that character. So it's important, as you would in a painting, you go from large to small, you go from the whole palette and zero in on the details. If you start from the details first, unless you're very experienced, it's hard to capture the whole. You need to be able to give focus to your primary characters in any one scene. You can do this through colour, through light, through texture, through which is choice of fabrics. Um, tonal values, dark light, putting somebody in a light costume against a dark background or against a crowd that is dark. You could bring that principal character in that scene forward by just by contrast. And actually, Mike has talked a lot in lighting about contrast. Contrast is so important in design. What are your dark moments? What are your light moments? Is this character a dark person? Is this character a light person? And all the time you're balancing up all these areas, bringing them together as a whole, as one complete picture. Something else that's important to do with conceptual design, to do with the text, to do with colour. So if you know the rules, then you can break them successfully. Unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of people going back to training are not taught the rules. Right. So they don't know what the hell they're doing, to be quite honest because they don't know how you use these different visual rules. You mean you the like. rules of colour, proportion? Which rules are you speaking about? The, any rules to do with it. If you know the period and you know what the period setting was, when this play was right. set, how it was set, why it was set like that, how it related to the society around it. If you know it, then you decide, I'm not going with this at all. In, I'm going to uh, create an entirely surrealistic effect. Then you know what the original was, and you can, because you know that, then you can break the rules of that piece. You can break, break the rules with colour. That, okay, if you want to put Lady Bracknell in pink, fine, but know why. That, again, that's to do with rules. Know the why you're doing it. Don't just do it for the hell of it. Don't just choose blue for so the hell of it. Let's take that as an example then, because this is quite interesting. If you took the importance of being earnest and Lady Bracknell and you did want to put her in pink, how would you make that resonant within the frame, a, a, a wise breaking of the rules as opposed to a arbitrary breaking of the rules? What would you do? I'd have to know why, because if I don't know why, it's like an actor. If you don't know why, how can you expect your audience to know if you don't know where your characters come from? And with design, the same thing applies. If you don't know the background of the person. Like so if the director and the actress said, all right, the reason we want Lady Bracknell pink is because she's has an interior passion that no one has ever dreamt of, and it's lain dormant, but it's actually hovering quite near her handbag latch, so to speak. Your conceptualization is superb. <laughs> and I hope to heavens that I was never to work with somebody. Obviously, but if I threw you a challenge like that as a director, what would you do? I'd grade the pink down as much <laughs> as possible so it was a subtle pink. Because a realistic historical interpretation of that particular play, you wouldn't give heavy dark colours because it's not a heavy dark play. It tends to be medium to light tonal values. It, need, it tends to be warm colours. And if you're going to be historically accurate, neutral colours. The English, and again, if you're putting the English overtone because it is an English play, 
the English and again colour is affected by the climate you live in so in England you've got this very grey muted climate you tend to have very grey muted colours or have had until the world became one and that colour palette changes mm-hmm. but you have to decide am I going to go with a, a colour palette that is historically accurate am I going to exaggerate the whole palette and ignore the historical sense which means then you've got to evolve your own style you have to create the style you have to it's like an actor doing a very stylized performance when everybody else is doing a very realistic or natu- naturalistic performance. The audience are going to see that and going, whether they realize what's happening or not, they realize that the rhythm of the piece isn't yeah. accurate. Yeah. The, there is something that's uncomfortable. Now, you may choose to make your audience feel uncomfortable. Why you would do that with the importance of being earnest, I don't know. But perhaps I'm a bit of a fuddy-duddy now. 